Did you know the first miracle Jesus did was at a wedding? They ran out of wine, so Jesus made more wine from water so the party could go on. Your wedding is important to God because it represents your marriage, which is a subject near and dear to God's heart. In fact, marriage was designed by God and is described very early in the biblical account. The book of Genesis starts with the creation account. Let's pick up the story in Genesis chapter 2 with verse 7. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And now verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the Lord called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Now our key verse, chapter 2, verse 24. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother, and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. We're going to focus on three parts from this verse. Leaves father and mother, is united to his wife, they become one flesh. Leaves his father and mother is an obvious reference to what happens when a young couple gets married and both are still living with their parents. But it's more than that when you think about the social and emotional implications of leaving. Even those who have lived away from home for some time can still have a very strong emotional connection and identification with their original family. This leaving addresses that connection by telling both the groom and the bride that they are no longer to consider their original family as their primary connection. That place now belongs to their spouse. The new home that you are establishing together is your family. Failure to understand this biblical concept can be detrimental to your new marriage. The problems can take several forms. Running home to mom. Having someone from your original family being your primary source of emotional support. Letting your parents or siblings interfere in your marriage. Sharing or listening to negative comments about your spouse. Letting an overbearing family member call the shots on where you'll spend holidays or vacations. All of these scenarios are a result of not understanding God's design that we are to leave mother and father and be united to our husband or wife. Be particularly aware if either of you works for the family business. If you have children in the picture and overbearing grandparents are involved. If you have seen your mom and dad interfering in the marriage of one of your married siblings. The two of you need to talk about how you will establish the independence of your own family from the extended family. Of course, this leaving idea is much easier to understand when you consider the next one, which is be united. You are in fact forming a new family unit. Together you may be making decisions that are not popular with your extended families. That's okay, as long as you both agree on where you're headed. Your own children, by the way, may try to divide and conquer. You need to agree and stand together on the rules in the household. However you decide to handle your personal finances, keep in mind this idea of being united. The more you are working together toward common goals, the more success you will have in your marriage. The third key phrase in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 is, they become one flesh. This has obvious implications for the sexual nature of the relationship. Sex in the right context is a wonderful thing and celebrated throughout the scriptures. In fact, sexual relations are essential to the success of a healthy marriage, and the Bible even warns about abstaining for too long. Being one flesh also speaks to the permanent nature of the relationship. 
When Matthew quotes our verse in Genesis, he adds, So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Separating two that have become one flesh is devastating to the people involved. It's like two pieces of paper glued together. Try to pull them apart and the individuals sustain severe damage. More is broken than a promise or a pledge. On the other hand, with God's help, the years increase this bond and the depth of the benefits are tremendous, literally adding years to your life and greatly improving your happiness. You really can be better together than you ever could have been as individuals.